Hey you guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we make this welcome sign in the easel. Uh, aligning the text vertically and center to the board isn't always the easiest process, um, especially in easel. There are a few extra steps that you might not think we have to do in order to set it up like this, all right? So let's jump right into the project over here. I've opened another window and set up my stock and I've selected a 90 degree bit and gone ahead with my CNC's optimal feed rates for what we're going to be doing over here, which is 65 inches a minute with 35 inch a minute plunge rate and a little shallower than a quarter inch per pass. And I'm gonna be planning on using the Amana RC45711 90 degree bit for this carve. So we can jump right in over here to using the easel text. Now I did show in another video how we can use any downloadable text using the Inkscape method. So I'll link that video in the corner as well. But in this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of the default texts in Easel, which is this Bakersville one. And this works really well for this welcome font. However, if you wanted to do something like hello and you wanted a more script text, these other ones here are just as easily done using these same steps. So with the text inserted in here, we can go ahead and type out our word, right? This is a welcome sign. So we'll type out welcome. And you'll notice that from here, there's no real options to align it vertically. We can rotate it 90 degrees, but that's not really what we want for this sign, right? So we'll bring it back to zero. And all the other options up here don't really, don't really fix our problem, right? So from here, the easiest way to do that is to just space it down like this. This kind of makes it a little bit more user intuitive as we move forward with this process. So by just pre pressing enter, we've kind of spaced out the, the letters here. Let me bring this over so you can see this a little bit better. And now our text is in here. It doesn't look too bad, but our center alignment, all these, you know, these letters are out of alignment. They're all left justified instead of center justified. And we don't have any real options here to center justify the text. So our best solution now is to actually change it from text to discrete vectors. And we can do that over here by clicking that app tool, the little Lego button right here, and going to the Exploder app. It actually starts with the letter X. There's a Shape Exploder, and that uh, sometimes has its own benefits as well. But for the majority of this stuff, I prefer this Exploder one. And by leaving the gap at zero, it doesn't alter our text at all. Although by changing the gap, it kind of changes the alignment that way, and that just looks really funky, right? So leaving it at zero, we can import the text. And now we have discrete vectors. So each letter is no longer editable as a letter. So if I decided I spelled something wrong and I needed to change that, it I, I can't change this one anymore that way. I'd have to go through and redo this exploder in order to get that new letter up there, okay? So with that in mind, you, you can also change the nodes by either double clicking or selecting edit points. So it is a vector now and you can edit it like a traditional vector. If you did have text that was, had some anomaly that you needed to edit or delete or modify. Uh, but now with it selected like this as discrete vectors, we can do a few things like we get this these, uh, section up here to align stuff. And right now it's already almost aligned left justified, we can right justify it, or we can center justify it. So now that it's centered amongst each letter, that's just what we kind of needed here for the board. Oops, that's our previous text, so let's get out the out of the way and bring this one back in there. Now I did a pretty good job of bringing it in near the center, but you can tell it's adjusted to the left just a little bit. So we can go ahead here and select edit and center to material, and that will fix it vertically and horizontally so that it is perfectly centered. Now, this text is a little small for my liking for this sign. So we could either enlarge it by grabbing this, but we just changed our center point. Um, so we'd have to go up here and re-center to material again. However, if you select this dot and lock this aspect ratio, you could just use that number there and type in a number and it will keep it centered. Now I did notice that our 
gap between the letters is also more than I would usually like for this sign. So another way to fix that gap is by again going to these apps and going to this equal spacing app. And here we can adjust the spacing, right? We want it spaced on center as well. And we're adjusting the vertical spacing, so the gap between each letter. So by selecting this use specified spacing, we can adjust this slider or, or type in a number manually to get the spacing between each letter. And I kind of like that right there. That looks pretty good. So we'll set that at right at five even. And I'll import that. And now we've got our letters a little bit closer in spacing. And that allows us to get a more traditional looking welcome sign. Again, you can modify this however you guys see fit. So if you don't like how the W and the M are a little bit wider than the rest of the letters, you could adjust them. Now, I would uncheck this uh, aspect ratio or else they are going to shrink in height as well. So then you can come over here and just adjust it like this. And it kind of brings them in to look a little bit similar in size to the other letters. All right, so there you have it. We are almost done with this text over here. You could either delete this by selecting it and just pressing the delete button because we've already converted all that to vectors anyway. Or if you do want it over there as editable, like let's say you're doing a last name or um, other signs one after the other, you can just leave it here and change it to a zero depth cut. Make sure it's all the way at zero and not like close to zero or else you'll still get a tool path. And you might not want that because that could very well cause your CNC to crash, right? So I always suggest running the simulation and taking a look at your tool paths over here to make sure you don't see any lines going off your stock over somewhere else where you know they don't belong. So now we can adjust that to zero, and you'll see that the simulation is corrected, and we're left with just this 14-minute carve for this text. Now I have used full depth, um, which essentially then limits it to just the depth of the bit angle. So if that 90-degree bit could get deeper, like if you change it to a 60, it could blow out through to the back, and bring you a hole right through your stock. So you might want to keep an eye on that. And a way to tell how close it is really is to kind of bring this down and see if we get any flat spots in there. So it looks like our biggest letter here was that C and the O, our widest point, right? So as long as those aren't hitting any flat spots, then we're gonna have at least a quarter inch material left in the back of our stock, because that half inch is still not making any flat bottoms to the carve. So we're still here at 14 minutes, and we can go ahead and run this carve and complete our welcome sign now.